Hot seat. Tony Pagliarulo. <laughs> Not so much um, hot seat. Tony, you know, if, if you weren't an IT guy, would, 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 could you play baseball? Were you a baseball player potentially? <laughs> no, well, my cousin was. Because you got a great name for yeah, baseball. That was my cousin, Mike. Mike Pagliarulo. Yeah, I played third base for the Yankees. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, my, second cousin. So you're a, you're a Yankee fan or a Red Sox no, fan? No, no, Red Sox. Oh, he is too. He's a Red Sox. He is too. He, uh, good he man. happened to be from this area, from the Boston area, and played for Tony, the Red Sox. Tony, Tony C, Tony Canigliaro, b- boyhood, you know, hero of mine. And Tony yeah, Pagliarulo absolutely. sounds familiar. So. I wish I had that talent. Instead <laughs> <laughs> of in IT, but yeah. I like it. Maybe your boys will be Volante. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, so Tony, welcome, welcome inside the cube. It's good to see you. SAP Sapphire, big event here. Uh, I've been telling the audience that EMC obviously is a big customer of SAPs. You guys got a lot of SAP deployments and, and Oracle as well. Yes, I mean, yes. you guys, you know, mission critical applications, and um, you, um, I think, are one of the more innovative IT operations that I've seen. I mean, a lot of that is you're driving EMC innovations, mm-hmm. particularly the journey to the private cloud. I mean, mm-hmm. that's something that your CIO Sanjay Merchandani, who we've had on the queue before, and we'll have him on later this week, has talked about. But I wonder if you could talk about your your journey sure. to the private cloud, where sure. you're at, and uh, and we'll dig into it a little bit. Yeah, so we've been on the journey for a long time. So it's kind of uh, you know not one of those things that happens overnight. So um, you know, for, first of all, uh, we we set a, a target of 100% virtualization. So virtualization is key to get into the private cloud. Um, we're we're a huge believer in leveraging our existing core assets, and virtualization is really allowed us to look at legacy applications, consolidate onto ERP like SAP and others. Um, and, you know, th- but virtualization is only one step, right? So, the, we, you know, the private cloud, um, you know, is all about enabling the business and driving results. So that's kind of a, the end state. IT is a service as an end state. So virtualization, job one, which we've done, app tier, middleware, database, reporting. So you think about SAP, not only does it include ERP, it includes reporting with business objects, and we're virtualizing every tier in the stack. And so that's step one. So once you get vir- get virtualized, great. So what? Well, you know, you've got, you, you drive a lot of benefit. You drive savings with respect to hardware, with respect to labor, with respect to energy and so forth. But again, the, the, the big value add is accelerating our ability to enable the business, right? Getting capabilities out there, in shortened time frames. What is the top things you're seeing for that? I mean, obviously, we heard, we've been hearing that story for a year from EMC. You guys have been delivering on it. EMC world, we heard cloud meets big data, mm-hmm. and we expanded out the services angle component, which is a lot of the integration, a lot of the meat and potatoes that you know, is not always this, you know, the sizzle that everyone talks about, but you know, there's a lot of proof points there. Last year, we had Tom Peck on talking about vBlock. Mm-hmm. Uh, where, you, where are you guys at today with, with some of these integration challenges, and what are the top three uh, areas that you've learned and see or you're working with, you're knee deep into. Can you share that? The top three kind of core areas. Hmm. L- l- let me let me think through that answer. Um, first of all, like a lot of Fortune 500 companies, we have a lot of legacy, right? You just can't walk away from those legacy applications. So you know, people refer to them as crap applications. So the challenge is marrying and leveraging the information and the value out of those legacy applications and combining it with your new platforms. It's, it, it's relatively, uh, it's less of a challenge to move to a greenfield vBlock platform with an SAP or another application. And that's what we've been doing. So anything net new gets virtualized. And, we'll move, and we bought into vBlock in a big way. Just because, again, you know, the, the value proposition in there is, you know, ease of it, it's, it's fully integrated, right? You know, literally, you buy the vBlock and you can put all your components on top of it. But we've, what we've also been doing is we're migrating those legacy applications to that private cloud, if you will. Key to that, though, is integration. So we've been lever- we've um, we've um, bought in big time to VMware Spring Framework. So the Spring Integration Framework, Spring Batch, is a really big enabler, and that's something that hasn't been discussed a lot. Paul Moritz at EMC World talked last week about um, the Foundry, and that really talks about the you know taking applications and then having the ability to put them in the container hosted internally, hosted externally, so the, the hybrid cloud option, but the integration component is key. So sharing information in a seamless, secure fashion is huge. So using Cloud Foundry and Spring? Yeah, yeah that's not legacy. No, <laughs> no. no, no, exactly, but we need it to, yeah. to, to knit the legacy together. Because again, we just can't walk away, away from these legacy apps as quick, quickly as we'd like. You know, the SAP journey, although we're going fast, um, is going to take us some time. 
How's the, how's the pressure? I mean, you work in an organization that Sanjay talks about. You know, in Silicon Valley, they talk about a dog food and eat your own dog food. Or as uh, Schmarzo said, was on, you drink your own wine, a little bit less of a dog metaphor. <laughs> uh, but you guys have to, you're taking all the new stuff in and you're playing with it, you're implementing it. And that's kind of the culture of EMC. Um, it's pretty dangerous. I mean, can you share this? Like when something blew up, I mean. <laughs> I need to be careful on. here. You know, can, uh, I would say that. Um, what, the, what have you learned? I mean, that <laughs> I've is a learned, I've learned, pressure situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I've learned a lot. So, um, you, know, um, you know, we've made some, uh, some um, educated bets, if you will. Everything we do, um, even if it's cutting edge or leading edge or maybe even bleeding edge, we put through a rigorous process. So we test, we test the hell out of it, both from an EMC to IT perspective and then we partner with EMC engineering. So lots of prep work goes in. But as you know, there's always something unforeseen. You can't test for everything. So when you move an enterprise, you know, um, mission critical database, you know, say 16 terabytes, which we did, 20 million transactions a day onto UCS, virtualized, and no one else has done that, you know, there's going to be some things to pop up. So, um, you know, th that, th you know, that's one example where we've taken some pretty significant risks. But with, again, we feel like we've gone through the right level of testing, and and, the, and those risks have paid off in a huge way. How do you manage that risk? What's the risk management strategy? I mean, the team obviously has to buy into it. You got a culture of people saying, hey, you know, we're mavericks. We don't mind, you know, drinking from right. the fire hose, trying new stuff out, test the hell out of it, all that stuff. But I mean, you got to be prepared mindset wise. And then you got to deal with a lot of curveballs. How do you protect that risk? You guys have certain strategies. I mean, IT, that's always the challenge. How can you take, do, play with the new stuff and accelerate that roadmap? Well, always you want to have a plan B. <laughs> so you want a fail back plan, right? But in some cases, you know, those migrations don't allow for it. So I guess, uh, as I said before, having that top-down support from Joe Tucci and his team is, is number one. Two, working with the partners. So again, whether it's SAP or Oracle or Cisco or VMware, you know, we up front said, hey, these are our goals. They're ambitious. We know no one else has done this. Are you guys willing to partner with us and hold our hand along the way? And by the way, make investments. And they all have. So investments in the form of giving us dedicated engineering support during the migration process, during the testing and migration process, as well as post go live. So those are ways you can mitigate the risk. So one of the simple um, risks that I'm sure you guys talked about, you're an application guy, and a lot of application heads don't want to virtualize their mission critical applications. You just said you did it with a 16 terabyte database. Yes. Performance is one area that you're obviously concerned about as, as an area of risk. What did you see when you migrated that database? How did you manage that risk around performance and how's it going? Well, number one is we did lots of performance tests. So we had a baseline of our as-is performance from a production perspective. We then built out a, a full replica and then we ran performance tests at 30x scale. And we saw the results were really good, David. I mean, that was the thing that was encouraging. You know, we were, we were running on a Solaris platform that was about five years old and at the time, it was state of the art, you know, E25K, big honking gear, right? I think about 196 CPUs. The, um, you know, moving with the Nehalem and the new form factor with UCS, it's just, you know, the, the, the clock speed, the memory footprint, it has been a giant step forward. That's been the key. That's the, that, you know, that has been the enabler to x86 is the new Nehalem chipset. Yeah, so, you know, a, a lot of people, this is actually an opportunity for a lot of customers out there who are running on, um, maybe non-Intel hardware, yep. or maybe even older Intel hardware, to really upgrade, and that's a f that's maybe a fundamental best practice is right? make sure you get the hardware right, so you can actually improve performance. Maybe not on an apples to apples basis, right? Mm -hmm. You could probably tune your performance on an apples to apples basis, physical, but the benefits of virtualization seem to outweigh some of the potential drawbacks there, don't they? You know. Without, you know, at the risk of being uh, self-serving, I, I, I haven't seen many drawbacks. It's hard to see the drawbacks, David. You know, even if you look at the, the licensing model, you save money there if you do it right. But so uh, you think about it, right? You, you know, from a um, capital investment perspective, you know, if we, if I was to replace those two, you know, UX devices, it would have been probably maybe $10 million. Going to, you know, the x86 platform, about two. So right mm -hmm. there, capital outlay. And then the full TCO, the labor associated with managing it, the you know the carbon footprint, the electric the, the electric consumption, the, you know the data center footprint, all less. So, 
I think you know I, I don't I haven't seen a lot of downside outside of kind of the the um, the apprehension. You know, IT folks and myself included are risk averse. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it's definitely that that crossing that chasm. Uh, typically, uh, to do it, you want to see proof points out there. And we have, you know, so we're, you know, we're, we're blazing the path. There were no proof points out there. You know, when I talked to our big partners and said, hey, show me another enterprise mission critical system running on this. <laughs> You're it, could, baby. Exactly. <laughs> hey, we're the first proof point. <laughs> okay. So, Tony, they talk a lot about the, uh, what I call the CIO's dilemma, the 70-30 thing, right? Where mm -hmm. 70% of the investment goes into running the business and only 30% of the investment can go into growing the business or transforming the business. And that's been the same mixture roughly since I've been in this business. Do you think that, that virtualization and cloud can change that or is that, um, is that a pipe dream? I think it's a key step to changing it. And um, I would suggest we're, we've shifted the dial. We moved the dial dramatically. Uh, we're probably about 50-50 now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and that's over the last three years. And um, you know, in a planful way, again, first of all, get moving to this virtualized platform. Your unit cost goes down dramatically, David. Right. So we're spe so we've got more money. So this, the, by the way, the, the our capital targets haven't changed. They've stayed the same. So we're you know we're taking a greater percentage and putting it into the business, into enabling technologies, enabling capabilities like SAP. So flat budget, and that's something you track. You have a portfolio management system that yes, allows we do. you to to, yes, to, yes, to bucketize the investments. Yep. And you haven't changed the definitions, right? To, no, we have to not make Joe the happy. No. See, Joe, we're at fifty-fifty, right? <laughs> In fact, we reduced our capital. Say that again. So we reduced our capital. So coming out okay. of, and this has been fairly well publicized by our CFO, uh, you know, at, toward, towards the tail end of 2008, with the greatest, you know, uh, recession since the depression, you know, we had a mandate to cut our budget by 20%. Virtualization was core to that. So we had, you know, and, and again, you know, we had developed business cases that said, hey, we'll be able to take out this much OPEX by virtualizing. And one of the initiatives, um, you know, which you may have heard Sanjay talk about was called Sweep the Floor. I referenced the crap applications earlier. You know, at one point we had 800 of these. So by going, you know, we, we rationalized the 800 down to 400, and then we virtualized, you know, 90% of that 400. So what about mobile? I mean, everyone's talking mobile, yep. iPad, iPhone, getting the data out, obviously EMC world, big data. Um, virtualization has always been that core enabler for kind of the new, the new applications. So mm -hmm. as you pave over or sweep the floor of the crap applications, and you got the budget going into the new stuff, Mobile sexy. Mobile people can touch mobile. Right? Mm -hmm. Mobile opens up a can of IT worms, right? It's like security, privacy, you know, virtualization yep. of the desktop. How are you handling mobile, and what have you learned, and what are you playing with on that in terms of uh, IT <laughs> IT projects? How right. is that shaping right. up? Right now, I've got my iPad running VDI, so VM View, and uh, you know we can actually um, run a lot of our applications off of that today. So the notion is, uh, John, we'll provision a user experience. You know, so wherever you are, whatever, based on your role, you'll log in, you'll pull down that secure container, and it'll have the applications you need. And so we'll hopefully move, you know, so it's device agnostic, whether it's, you know, you know a tablet, you know, a laptop, sitting in you know, some kiosk somewhere at Starbucks, whatever it is, the notion would be you can, you know, we'll be able to, you know, get your unique user experience with the right access management around it. So we're already moving that in that direction aggressively. We've, I think we've got about um, 5,000 images out there now. Uh, virtual images out there now across the EMC environment. How would you grade the performance? I mean, obviously, you know, being self-critical, obviously, you know, can you share with us kind of how you feel? I mean, what inning are we in, Juan? And then how would you grade yourself? <laughs> I got to be careful with that one. Um, I, <laughs> I might abstain from the grade. No, no, you know what? I think we're I mean, probably... bottom of the first I, inning, no, no, third no, no, inning, no, 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 we no, no, no. seventh I inning think, stretch? I think we're in the fourth inning, right? I think we're about to hit an inflection point, right? So um, there's new technologies coming out. Um, you know, there's going to be, you know, some VMware's coming out with a web-based solution, you know, so no GUI, GUI or DLL at all. That's going to be, you know, we're, we're playing around with that. Um, I think we're about, you know, the, the fourth in the middle, middle innings, and I think there'll be a, a big step forward, just like there was with virtualization a couple years ago. It's going to go fast. The other thing in terms of when people think about mobile, um, you know, we, we have, we've been enabling our content for mobile consumption, right? Whether, you know, we, we put, we have lots of apps up on, you know, you know the iStore, the App Store, um, you know, we take some of our in-house applications and we port them through our own mobile enterprise application platform. So, you know, mobility has, you know, lots of different variations of it. But to me, ideally, you know, because I've, I'm an, app, I'm an apps guy now, 
I've run client services before. I've run that kind of have pretty much every job in IT. I'd love to get out of the PC business. Why is that? It's it, there's no upside. It's just painful, right? There's you know, so you end up dealing with you know manufacturers' problems in that, right? So break, fix stuff to compatibility yeah, issues. Yeah, and to the, yeah, exactly. Bloated, big, right. fat client right. issues, right? You get it. Versus a, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather about, just get. I think it. we talked about that last year. Yeah. Microsoft being yeah. big, fat, bloated <laughs> PC. You know exactly. You know. How about, um, let's talk about SAP a little bit. So when you come to a show like this as an IT practitioner, first of all, what are you looking for? And, and, and what do you think about what you're hearing from SAP? Um, I, you know, my objective of these, uh, coming to these shows is to come away with like two or three ideas I can take back with me, right? So on the, on the SAP front, I'm most interested in roadmaps, so like mobility you talked about. So, you know, SAP bought Sybase. How are they going to bring those things together and really power you know, application mobility. Because as I said before, you know, the old model used to be, you, you know, you've had to either build it your own platform or you go with a third party or go with one of the carriers. So I'm really interested in seeing what SAP does there. So I'm going to be pretend, uh, attending a few breakouts on that. Uh, the other thing is just, you know, connecting with my peers. And that's just, that, that's, that might be the, the biggest benefit of coming to these types of shows and just, you know, shared empathy is a powerful thing, right? Talking about experiences like we're doing now. And bringing that what back kind of to conversations the shop. is that? I mean, you see him in the hallway. Hey, I just, can you believe that? Uh, did, did you have that problem? I mean, what do you talk about? I mean, <laughs> give us a little snapshot of the hallway conversation. Well, I mean, uh, hey, can you believe that vendor? Oh, SAP's. Uh, they did this. Mm-hmm. How's Oracle hey, treating you? Know. Oracle. <laughs> Damn Oracle. What a lot of that. That's privileged information. About? You know what I mean? That's <laughs> practitioner information. <laughs> you know, that's you know, you're, that's the inner sanctum. Peer to peer. Right? Right? I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little. Velvet rope. What's the, what's the, just I mean, anything. What's the I sentiment? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is I think, it you know, high fives? Is it like, you know, a couple beers? I mean, what do you do? A lot of it's bears. It's saying, okay, you know what? Because you know, in spite of the technology. And the technology's come a long way. At the end of the day, whether you're moving to a private cloud or implementing SAP, it's about business change and business transformation. And that's never easy. You know, as I like to say to folks, my job would be easy if it wasn't for the people. You know? The technology is is really is great. It's those business conversations because how do you how, you know IT's being consumed differently. You know, we've got folks that are just so much more educated today that back than when I started in the workforce. So you really so so anyway, that's that's you know. What's, what's the number one people problem that you're seeing out there? I and mean, honestly, we've we've talked a lot about this. How there's retraining going on. A lot of this new tech with virtualization, um, application mobility, other things that you're mentioning. Uh, Hadoop, we t- we've been covering like a blanket, mm-hmm. as you know. Big mm-hmm. data is now a big part of EMC's uh, positioning. This is new stuff. I mean, this is not the world's changed significantly. Integrated skill sets. You got a network guy who's been a network guy for 15, 20 years. All of a sudden, it's like, hey, you got to start learning application frameworks. That's right. So, That's hey, right. application framework guys, you got to start understanding policy and automation. So or, or, bus- the- or business capability. You know, I mean, I think um, you know m- one of my biggest challenges is taking my you know, app developers, app architects, and getting them to speak business lexicon. And, you know, think about IT as a service, presenting you know infrastructure as a service. You know, it, it's bits and bytes, right? But you know, how do you um, expose IT in a way that the business can consume it? Because quite frankly, we're competing with the Salesforce.coms or the Amazon, or you know, or in the UIT. Mobile, exactly. You, you, exactly. You within IT are competing with those, those Ab- service providers. Absolutely, yeah. and we've got to present our value proposition in the same way. So reskilling my organization on the front end to be able to do that is yeah. a, is probably my biggest challenge. What do you look for when you look at? The, the IT tech athlete out there, the young or or older, relearning new skill sets. I mean, what do you look for? I mean, you know, to bring the sports metaphor to it, because we've been talking about like the ESPN of tech. But, but seriously, I mean, IT is changing. Um, there's skill sets. What's the new skill set? We say, hey, you know, we're looking for, you know, someone who can throw the ball down the field. I mean, what IT skill set do you look for and say, that guy's got some potential, that, that gal, she's amazing. Is it the DBA? Is it, you know, all this is changing. Mm. What, what do you look for and say, that's talent? How do you identify talent? You know, it's, it, it, it depends, right? I mean, I think there's still some skills that are really hard to come by. SAP, right? So, you know, good basis administrator is hard to come by. So, you know, that's unique. Um, I, I'd say, think, speaking of big data, you know, uh, the, the role of data architect, like EMC's talking about data scientists, but um, I think that's going to be a real unique arcane skill. There's not that many of them. Mm-hmm. But data architect, that's someone who actually understands the source systems, understands business process, and so I look for people that really understand, have business context as well as technical aptitude. 
right? And it's not necessarily, um, unless, it's more of a unique situation to get that great Oracle app DBA or that SAP basis expert. I'm, we're more looking for what, I, you know, back to your sports analogy, the best available athlete. I can't get the quarterback in the draft, so I'm going to go for the best athlete. Yeah, and it's not necessarily the technical skills, it's some of the other intangibles and the ability Absolutely. to interact with the business. And business leaders are fickle, right? I mean, their business changes and then they want IT to respond overnight. I mean, that's got to be a challenge. Yeah. Um, so I have a question on Twitter that came in from someone, uh, Martin, said, uh, what is SAP's cloud foundry strategy? Parentheses, in case they even have one. Smiley face. Um, <laughs> uh, I think well, you have you to ask uh, Jim Schnabe that question. Yeah, he's going to be on later on tonight. And, uh, Jim, you've been, you've been prepared, so he's going to talk question. vision. We're going to have a good conversation with I him. I think you're going to hear something about that this week. I mean, yeah. I'd be surprised if we don't hear what their cloud foundry-like strategy is this week, whether it's cloud foundry or something we'll else. We'll see, we'll yeah. see. So what's yeah. on the to-do list? You, you mentioned, it sounds like you want to see some substantive product out of the combination of Sybase and SAP. That's something that we've been waiting for. That's what I'd like to see, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, to really to try to leverage that relationship. What else is on the uh, the SAP to-do list uh, from a practitioner's point of view? Um, I'm interested in where HANA goes. I think back to big data, I think the, you know, BMC strategy, you know, of enable, you know of enabling big data, um, integrating that with a HANA-like solution. I mean, you know, I think there could be something pretty powerful there. So as a practitioner, you know, um, you know, the in memory, especially as it pertains to BI, I think is an attractive value proposition. I think I'd like to see is, um, you know, um, you know, SAP, you, you know, historically with with BW Business Warehouse or BWA is optimized around SAP and ECC. And as I said before, you know, any most large companies have multiple sources of information, both structured and unstructured. So um, you know, you look, you know, think about big data. You, you want a solution like a green plum that can aggregate that information. So I think some, you know, some combination of green plum with maybe SAP's, you know, HANA for BI, it could be something there. So I'm, I'm kind of anxiously waiting. I'm, I'm, it's not quite there yet, but I'm, ho I'm hopeful. But so potentially game changing from a development standpoint, is uh, yeah, that right? Uh, yes, I think so. Because you know, I also own the enterprise data warehouses for EMC, and um, that's one place. You know, people can get their heads around OLTP. And you know, if it's not the best user experience, it takes a little longer to say, you know what, they know it's complicated. But ultimately, it's all about getting the information they need to make business decisions. So there's, um, so that BI is huge value add. So to me, if, you know, and so what we do, today's model is lots of iteration, heads down development. To accelerate that, instead of spending two weeks writing a report to add a column, if we can expose that information to users, and we leverage, you know, between Greenplum and potentially some type of SAP solution, and really go to self, BI self-service, I think that's that'd be that'd be a great step forward. How f how far ahead of your your peers? You talked about before how EMC's IT very much leading edge. I kind of had a mandate from Joe. Um, you got a lot of strategic, you know, assets in your portfolio that you're bringing to bear. How far ahead? do you think you are of the typical peer that you talk to? And I don't mean that in any kind of you know, braggart way. I mean, it's, it's clear you've, you've had a mandate to push the risk envelope, probably more so than the other guys. Is it, is it six months, a year, two years, five years? How far out in front do you, do you see your organization? Um, I think you know, on the curve, the maturity curve, we're in the top 25%. And that's uh -huh. the best way I could say it, you yeah. know, um, without disparaging anybody. But I do get, I talk to hundreds of customers. Um, I, I get the opportunity to go and talk about what we've done, share. And there's, um, there's definitely some customers that are right up there in the maturity curve. But uh, I think there's many that are in the middle. And, and by the way, I measure that in two ways. One is, you know, we talk about percent virtualized, you know, and I think, you know, Paul Moritz talked about mature companies being 40 to 50%. We happen to be 85%. But then going beyond that and leveraging it as, you know, in a strategic way, you know, exposing that capability to drive results in an agile fashion. So I think we're, we're right up there. Yeah. What are you seeing in terms of, talks about the you know, bottom of the fourth inning with IT, but let's talk about you know, some of the earlier innings and other aspects like Hadoop. Uh, EMC, obviously, with Green Mesh and Green Plum. Mm -hmm. um, Kleiner Perkins just announced that they put $9 million dollars into a startup data, data mirror or something like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, are you playing with Hadoop? Are you playing with Hadoop on Green Plum? You, and how does Isilon fit into all that as well? Um, so not my area of expertise, but definitely Green Plum is in my, in my space. Isilon, we're, um, you know, we weren't a large customer of Isilon before we purchased them. We're just looking at Isilon, so we, we, you know, 
We like the possibilities. Hadoop as well. We're just you know looking at it from an innovation perspective. Any deployments so internally? Or you're just kind of playing it early. Just playing early. Playing. Playing. Okay, early. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. All right. We're here with Tony Pagliarulo from EMC's uh, IT uh, Vice President of uh, Practitioner Extraordinaire. Uh, Tony, it's great to have you on the Cube. Always really enjoy your perspectives. Thanks, uh, very common sense. Um, um, last thing for you, uh, for your peers that you talk to, wanting to take this journey. What what advice would you uh, would you leave them with? <sighs> Number one, I know I've said this a few times. Get the executive commitment, number one. Um, you know, um, number two, have a strong um, business case and a plan, a good plan, a detailed plan, and ensure that plan allows for, you know, rigorous testing. Because even though we're aggressive and we're bleeding edge, you know, we go through a, a, you know, again, a rigorous life cycle uh, management process. Excellent. So, we, Tony, we've been watching the journey, and uh, you guys have been making phenomenal progress. Actually. Probably a little faster than we had thought, uh, to be honest with you. And uh, we'll keep watching. And uh, so thanks again for sharing your perspectives. Great to have you on. My pleasure. Good to see All you right. again. Good Take to care. Have you.